What's going on guys? Michael Krug, health and fitness coach, coachkrug.com, uh, here with another little truth talk and going to be kind of brief today. Uh, I've had this question about BMI multiple times over the last couple weeks, both from clients as well as people on social media reaching out. So I just wanted to address it with a video. So hopefully you're able to find this if you ask me this question. Uh, so when it comes to BMI, it stands for body mass index and it really was just a way for I guess when it was developed to understand if people are over or underweight based on their height. And uh, back when it was developed, which was in the 1830s by a guy named uh, Lambert, Al Ad <laughs> Lambert Adolphe Jacques Quetelet. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, maybe if someone speaks a different language that that language is, they can tell me that. But uh, it was, it was a, a astronomer, philosopher guy out of Belgium. Uh, and he created this and they called it the Quetelet measure to understand what an average man should weigh based upon his weight. And it's been used a lot. There's actually, I've seen, um, it, it's, it, people have said that it's been used by like life insurance because it's really just an easy gauge for, for you to understand, okay, is this person potentially healthy or not? And I think overall as just a generic like if you want to go super quick and get an understanding of where someone is at objectively when it comes to their health when it comes to a mass standpoint yeah i think it, it could work however it doesn't take into account a lot of things that i specifically talk about when it comes to muscle mass when it comes to um, really just function of the body and it doesn't really look at biometrics as well as how our body is functioning all it is telling us and really this is the the equation for BMI is kilograms divided by meters squared. So, uh, for example, if you're like 1.8 meters or whatever, you'd square that, and then you would take however many kilograms you weigh in mass, and you would divide it by that number. So, again, it's a really simple way to get a quick number that can be objective, that you can tell someone like, hey, you might be a little over, might be a little under, uh, and there's ranges for that. So if your BMI is under 18.5, you are apparently underweight. Uh, if you are between 18.5 to 24.9 BMI, that's in the normal range. Uh, and then if you're over 25, so anyf anywhere from 25 to 29.9 is overweight per se. And then anything over 30 is actually considered obese. And the reason I personally am not a big fan of this measure is because, again, it doesn't take into account muscle mass. Uh, and according to this measure, I'm obese, okay? So sitting at about 235, 5'11". Um, and with that, we'll talk about it in a second, but when it comes to my health metrics, I'm actually a very healthy individual. So um, I just wanted to address the fact that BMI was created for a reason. I don't think that it is accurate, especially with the way we consume in our culture nowadays. Uh, I think also with the type of aid culture we have. And then too, just a lot of people nowadays in particular are uh, building more muscle mass and have more muscle mass, which has actually been correlated with pretty much every stat related to longevity and being healthy as we age is related. It's having high muscle mass is related to better outcomes with those. So I think it's more important to have really high muscle mass. So that's where I focus. But now I want to go over really quick three uh, better options or just different options for kind of measures of progress that maybe could serve you better in your journey. So the first one is body fat percent. So like I mentioned, uh, I am obese by BMI, by BMI standards, but my body fat percent is like 19.5. So I'm actually in the healthy range of body fat percent. Um, and when it comes to body fat, um, we already know that muscle is very, very important for longevity and to be healthy. So focusing on body fat percent is really, a be I think it's a, probably the best thing you can do. To be able to do that, there's a couple different ways. So first is a hydrostatic weighing. So that's actually where you find this center where they have this weight where you can weigh yourself underwater. Uh, by doing it underwater, it's weighing more of your lean muscle mass and then they just do the math from there. This is the most accurate way. However, it's also not, not everyone has a hydrostatic weighing device or a scale that you can just access on a regular basis. Um, so the other one, which I highly recommend is bioelectrical impedance. So if you've ever used one of those scales where you like, you put your hands, sometimes it's on the side, uh, sometimes you hold the lever in front of you, uh, and then there's little like electrode things by your feet. That is a really good way to understand what your body fat percent is at. And again, keeping track of body fat percent 
is going to be way more beneficial to your health and longevity than following the scale or following BMI, right? Like if you're losing weight, but all you're losing is muscle mass, that's not a good thing. However, if you're staying the same in weight, but you're losing body fat and increasing muscle mass, that's a fucking fantastic thing, okay? So understanding your body fat percent is a great, probably my favorite way to track progress. Another one that's good, so number two is just measurements of the body. So I think the best one to look at is neck, right? So, you know, most guys are probably gonna be anywhere from like a 15 and a half inch neck up to 19. Um, the neck size can be a really good indicator of where you're at body composition wise. Uh, if you are more lean, you'll generally have a leaner neck as well. Um, and then a lot of dress shirts are just, they go by neck size. So physically measuring your neck. Also the waist can be a good one. Um, there is a lot of evidence to show that once you get above like 38 or 40 size waist as a male, um, that extra visceral fat, you know, that's in the kind of midsection, um, that can have detriments on our health that we don't want to experience um, when it comes to chronic disease, things like that. So keeping our waist in check. And then two, just taking measurements maybe of your legs, of your arms, if you are looking to maybe increase your size and your muscles in those areas, it's a great way to track progress as well. Uh, and then, so the third thing that I wanted to go over, and this is not objective like uh, body fat percent or measurements, but I think it, it's probably one of the best things to recognize too, is just how you feel. I know it's super subjective, but recognizing that if we're exercising regularly, uh, if you're putting good foods into your body, and you're really just taking time to honor your health and well-being in your body, oftentimes you're gonna feel better, you're gonna have more energy, you'll feel more confident going about and doing things in your day-to-day -day life. So focusing on that, right? Like, are you sore? Are you tired? Are you irritable? Um, are you energetic? Are you ready to go? Do you have the energy to keep up with your family, kids, whatever it may be? That's a really good measure as well. So just wanna to touch on BMI quickly today. Again, a lot of people have been asking, so I'm gonna send this directly to some people um, as well as um, just put it out there. And so uh, as always, if you have, if you found your way to this page or this video, uh, if you enjoyed what I'm speaking, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can comment below. You can shoot me an email, michael at coachcrew.com. Um, and feel free to hit me up. Uh, I am always here to answer questions and just continue to share truth when it comes to health and, and fitness about When it comes to truth about health and fitness for you. I also don't edit these videos because I'm a one take kind of guy. So uh, that's all I got for today. And as always, until next time, keep inspiring. Thank you.